video discusses how to use the lead to call automation tool in track drive uh, we will send out text messages emails and make outbound phone calls to convert a lead into a phone call so I'm gonna to go to setup system here and everything's gonna be in line with our offers eventually so eventually our menus will just have offers and reporting so I'm gonna show you how to do this through the offer itself so I'm gonna come into my uh, new student loan offer here and down to the area for lead to call automation. Now since I don't already have a schedule, you can have unlimited schedules uh, trying to convert leads to calls for any offer in the system. But I'm going to go ahead and click set up lead to call automation. Now behind the scenes what this has done, if I open schedules in a new tab, is it has created this new student loan schedule for me on the fly. Uh, however, I'm going to show you in the offer how to set this up. So now the contact caller actions, these are the cadence, for lack of better words, of what we're going to do to convert this lead to a call. Now normally you would be tempted to send them a text message right away thanking them for filling out the form. However, um, since you can only send so many text messages per day per DID, you know, if you load up 20,000 age data every single day, you're going to burn up your numbers on these SMS. So I like to paste them inside the calls so that if people are answering the calls I don't need to send them a text message unless they're not answering so I prefer to not send a text message until later down the road to preserve my number um, reputation you can send an email thanking them right away so bam hey thanks for filling out the form we're gonna be calling from this track drive number call us back uh, something like that so I'm gonna do place a call is my first step now wait for daylight hours. What are daylight hours? You define those in the lead to call options here. I'll go over that in a bit. Uh, wait for a buyer to be available. That's going to check their hours of operation, their concurrency cap right now, uh, any other caps that they have. If you tell it to pre-match some of your filters before placing the call, like the state or zip code or any other tokens you have on leads, um, you can tell it to go ahead and filter by that pre-call assuming that data is not going to change you want to make sure you have a buyer like the state or the zip code on a lead probably won't change and then we could also wait for buyer to convert so if the only buyer that's available is already converted or there's something in the in his conversion filters that wouldn't make it convert with this data we won't call the lead because you're waiting for ones that you can make money on and then decrease lead priority I like to do this automatically for you know definitely to start whether the data is aged or new I want to bump the lead priority to get the leads as I load them to be less uh, important than other leads that are loaded at the same time or coming in in real time so decrease lead priority I'll do at least for the first few calls for both types and I'll show you that here so I'm gonna place the call now a good strategy is to wait 30 seconds place another call wait another 30 seconds and place another call now some people might think this is a little aggressive but if it's good data they're going to answer one of these first calls but there's lots of reasons to do this is one is reputation repetition they keep seeing you calling from the same number so they're curious who is calling me another reason is to, to kind of bust as your your phone numbers are getting aged and they're starting to have more scam likely uh, messages coming over as the caller ID instead of your C name that you want to send over there caller name C name um, this will bust it so this one they block they see it coming in again they let it through so both the reputation of seeing that same number and the fact that it'll help you get through a scam likely blocks uh, is a good cadence here now right here is where I might send a text message saying uh, we are contacting you you can put whatever you want here contacting you call us back at now it's track drive number to be an automatic replacement of what we actually are sending the uh, the SMS from track drive number or SMS number if you're using two different pools I'll discuss that a little later um, but typically you just say track drive number that's where we're going to be you want them to call into uh, even if it's different SM number if you're engaging our SMS AI bot, which I'll discuss on another uh, video, you usually do want to pose a question like, or would another time be better 
for you or could you name another time or something like that so if someone filled out a form at work and we're trying to contact them they might be seeing a text message and uh, after you call a few times and they can't answer where they'll say I'm at work call me at 5:30 p.m. we would detect that automatically schedule a call back at 5:30 p.m. and stop this schedule until that time comes about all right so there's the text messages I send out I might at this point if I didn't send an email before do an email now my recommendation on emails is you don't integrate with MailChimp and tell it to start a drip when the lead starts I would start a drip at the end of schedule action saying okay we've done everything we could on track drive to contact the person now I'll do an email drip as the last step I do at the end of schedule however um, you could do uh, individual emails throughout the cadence of the contact caller actions all right so that's that and then I'd start slowing things down I'd wait now an hour and then place another call and then start slowing down more maybe wait two hours now we do have these different types of waits you can wait seconds minutes or hours that's obvious I can wait for so many days or I can wait till a time of day which I might say wait until tomorrow and go at uh, 1 p.m. to see if that works and then I can then wait again for an hour and call back again whatever you want to do for your cadence here that's all up to you but this is a pretty good cadence that we know works for people you will really slow things down you know wait two days call wait a week call um, whatever but you do well slow down the cadence here so that you're you're not just frustrating your leads all right so we also have triggers that can end the schedule and the default trigger we have here is uh, stop contact actions when buyer answers phone so that's a good one there is you don't know especially if you're in IVR mode you don't know if the buyer is just getting screamed at after the person got through your IVR to stop calling them they'll say okay hang up but if our if we were waiting 30 seconds and call again that'd be bad because uh, they don't have time to tell you or if they're even ever going to tell you that this consumer said remove me we don't know that if the buyer was answering the phone so typically you will want to kill the lead once a buyer enters the conference but other um, end of schedule action triggers we have are when a leads expired um, you can have traffic sources that are sending you real-time leads but they give you an hour to work with it before they need to know did you make it a call or should I sell it as a lead so I might come in here and say I want you to stop the lead this many minutes after the lead was submitted so let's we'll say they give us 75 minutes to turn it into a call they could you can do that from the time the lead was submitted or after the first scheduled action which you would do because you know maybe leads are coming in at 2 in the morning and there's no way you're going to contact them within 75 minutes so the if the publisher said yeah go ahead and uh, you know from when you can really contact the lead you got 75 minutes so after the first scheduled action time go ahead and get it back to me now I would manage filters on this and say I'm trying to do this if the traffic source was let's say Janet Yeager she is the one saying hey you got 75 minutes to turn that into a, a lead okay so so now I have a trigger in here to kill the lead if it's coming from Janet and it's after 75 minutes you can also trigger the lead automatically when data changes so if, if the lead data changes I can tell it to kill the lead as well so that if the agents changing data for me or the consumers keying in key presses and that changes data that will trigger the end of this schedule we can do that as well okay so that's what that's all about now the end of schedule actions are the same as our contact caller actions but you'd probably be doing different stuff oh I'm sorry I need to discuss this I forgot here on the decrease lead priority if I'm trying to say I want to decrease the lead priority as I'm doing live leads um, but I don't want to do it with my age data after the first few calls I can't check this button here to decrease lead priority all the time I would have to do something like this where I say I want to modify the lead I'm gonna manage filters and I say if it's not age data so let's say I'm loading a field in there age data equals true I'm saying if it's not equal to true 
I want to go ahead and modify the lead priority manually and add one to it. Now the lower the lead priority the better. Um, so you want to load your age data at lead priority 50 or something and live data at zero. Or if you've already started using the system and you've already loaded a bunch of leads and you forgot about lead priority in the data, you could load your live data at lead priority negative 100 for example. So the lower the number the better, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and tell the system that I want to bump the lead priority and then I want to do that after the call. So now instead of automatically bumping lead priority, I am telling the system if it's not age data, bump the lead priority. But I want my age data to stop bumping so that it will all become the same priority and stick there so that as I'm starting to keep killing through the cadence of caller actions for my age data, they all eventually become the same lead priority Why my live data keeps going through the steps of making it worse and worse because you're going to have less live data. Alrighty. So these end of schedule actions, what you're usually doing is like the webhook post out to Janet saying, hey, the lead didn't convert to a call, go ahead and sell it. Or add it to another schedule. Let's say your agents are cross-selling or down-selling your, your data. So the, the data started as a um, auto warranty, let's say, and as you're interviewing them, you ask them, are you also interested in auto insurance and maybe a home warranty? So when the lead is done, I can tell it to add it to another schedule based on checking were they interested in, in home warranty or auto insurance or whatever and add it to that schedule. So usually you're not trying to do more contact caller actions down here. You're trying to interface to something else telling you know, them what happened with the lead. Now here's the lead to call options. And before I go in here, I am going to show you the number pools which you're going to need. So I'll open that in the new tab here. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a new number pool for this example here. So I want to make sure that they're SMS numbers. Even if you're not sending SMS, tell the system to match up numbers that can be SMS in case you decide to add that later. So I'm just going to say SMS ready pool for new student loans. I'm going to pick the offer it's for. I don't need a traffic source because that will come from the data. I don't have a number limit because I am going to tell TrackDrive don't pull my numbers automatically. I'm going to fill them with the area codes I want to dial from and send text messages from. So the number limit doesn't matter. You can even make it one if you wish. The provider can be any of the providers you've integrated or even TrackDrive. So I'm going to pick that. Uh, once I pick local, I do have to come back and pick the country. So United States will be the country. Local, this doesn't matter because I am going to fill my numbers uh, automatically. I turned off auto rent. And the reason is I want to set up this setting here for outbound call settings. I'm going to tell it to match the leads area code to a number in the pool and use that number from the pool that matches exactly. If I don't have an exact match, at least try to match within the state. We also have the ability to say, you know, match these, uh, the leads area codes for northern Texas to this northern Texas area code. And then you add another one match this uh, area code for the southern Texas area codes to this number to dial with and send text messages with, etc. So the order of operations on our number pool is try to find an exact match. If you can't, try to find a mapped match. If you can't, try to use a number in the state. If you can't, look for a toll-free number. Not an option here, but we'll just look for a toll-free number to use. If it can't find that, it will randomly use anything from your pool. Now when a lead comes into the system, whether you're uploading a batch file or you're having real-time leads come in, the second the lead hits our system, we do sticky a number from the pool to the lead so that we're always calling and sending text messages from the same phone number. So I'm going to go ahead and create that pool there. Now I'm going to go back to my student loan offer here and the lead call options. I'm going to say that I do want to dial with the pool instead of a single phone number because I want to rotate and dial locally. So I'm going to grab the SMS ready pool for new student loans. I am going to also distribute my SMS the same way. So I'm going to pick that same pool. So when a lead comes in, it's going to pull a number and sticky both the track drive number and an SMS number, but since I'm using the same pool, it's going to be that same number. These incoming filters here are to filter data as it's coming in. Like if people are posting data to you and you say you don't want Illinois and New York, 
you could filter it off and will reject those leads as you upload them or uh, have leads coming in in real time. The C name here would be uh, what you want them to see. So stud, uh, student loans, for example. Um, that's going to be the caller name or C name as it's called in the industry that they see below the uh, DID that we're calling from. Now I'm going to tell this because it's my data and I know it's good. I don't want it to skip DNC numbers. If you do want it to skip DNC numbers, that's going to check the Federal Trade Commission's do not call uh, list. It will automatically not call people on the DNC. So if you're calling age data, do leave that checked on. If you're calling age data that you don't know about the TCPA <laughs> worthiness of your data, also tell it to skip mobile numbers. Um, if you're in IVR mode, which means we're just calling through your leads when they answer, we play a message, press one to get through or whatever, you can turn on machine detection. That means are we hearing a voicemail machine answer the phone? If so, we'll stop playing the greeting and then start playing the um, leave a voicemail message. Um, in instant agent mode, the difference is that we're going to call the agent first and they never hang up on that phone call and we keep calling leads after that and adding the leads as they answer into the conference for the agent. So in that case, no messages are going to play from your offer. It's going to have the agent on the line so there is no greeting or any of that stuff. If they call inbound, you can play a greeting, but as we're dialing outbound, all messages in the offer won't play if we have the agent on the phone first so that we can uh, handle that as, a, as if the agent was calling manually to all those people. Okay, so how are we going to duplicate your leads? Um, most people say, I don't want to have the same lead added to the system for 30 days. That's all up to you. Some people don't dedupe at all. Now, what happens is if a lead is still running through the caller actions and it comes in again, the lead will just be updated. If, all, if there was a lead in the system and all the actions had finished, we would add a new lead and start the cadence from the beginning. So this dedupe time frame here, and we do only dedupe by caller ID, uh, the consumer's phone number, which we call caller ID. Um, that we, that's the only field we dedupe by. So you don't say an option like I want to dedupe by email or whatever. It is the caller ID since we are a phone system. And then you can say whether you want to dedupe against the schedule or for your entire system. Usually it's the schedule because you can have the same lead on a auto insurance schedule as you do on an auto warranty schedule, for example. If your leads are coming from a lead platform, we default to this huge number because it's always the same IP address the leads are coming from. But if your leads are coming directly from a website, you might set this to one lead per day or one lead per month or whatever. So that someone that isn't happy about your advertising methods isn't sitting there filling out fake leads one after the other, we can dedupe them by IP address. The call limits, I usually let the system pace itself, so I just say unlimited. And then here, I tell the system, stop if one person ends up in the hold queue. I'm um, in instant agent mode, that's not a big deal. I'm talking about IVR mode, when to stop dialing, is when people end up in the hold queue for sure. In instant agent mode, we're going to paste them based on the concurrency cap of the agent, which is going to be one. And so we're only making calls until all the agents are busy. All right, so the daylight hours here we discussed earlier, that checkbox that says only call during daylight or only perform this action during daylight. These two boxes here are you defining in each time zone what daylight hours are. Now this time zone here does belong down here in business hours. Uh, so imagine it's down here. This is saying when am I letting this thing run? And usually you just set it 24-7 because the check boxes we have in each action let you control when things actually happen. You don't have to worry about it running 24-7. But if you do want to only have any of the actions listed above, to only happen during certain hours, no matter what, to avoid mistakes, you can indeed edit this and say that it only runs from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday or something. The daylight hours here are in each time zone, so we'll only call people from 8 to 9 in Eastern, 8 to 9 in Central, 8 to 9 in, in Mountain, 8 to 9 in Pacific, etc., etc. It does go for certain other countries as well. All right, so those are your setup here to say how are we going to contact the consumer. So that's the lead to call options. I do have another video about how to set up agent scripts if you're using instant agent mode or even agents that just answer the phone. Um, that's on another video. But that is how you set up the lead to call automation in TrackDrive.